Hey, it's Tony from Adafruit, and I'm back with another Circuit Playground video. So Circuit Playground is our little all-in-one electronics learning board. And in this video, I wanted to look at something really cool, an idea that I had kind of earlier in the week and started to explore and then realized that, yeah, there's a really cool thing you can do. And that's using Blue, Bluetooth Low Energy or the Blue Fruit LE modules that we have and connecting them to a Circuit Playground board so that you can control it wirelessly using like the Fermata protocol. And so I'll show you that we actually have all the pieces and software in place for this already. Uh, and I just made a small little example that you can load up to uh, start using this yourself. And the basic idea is you can, from a mobile phone app or a tablet app, so we have an Android application and an iOS application. I'll show both of those. Uh, and there's also an OS X desktop application, uh, but I haven't really used it too much yet. But from one of those applications, you can connect wirelessly to a Bluetooth module that's connected to Circuit Playground. And then the application can tell Circuit Playground, you know, turn this digital input on or read this digital, or sorry, this digital output, turn this on or off, or read this digital input, like the buttons and the switches that we have on the Circuit Playground board. Um, and eventually, and it's not working right now, but things like the sensors that are connected to analog inputs, you know, you could probably read those. Uh, the one thing you can't do though is you can't control all of the components on the board, like the NeoPixels right now. There's no support for that, just because this is using the standard Fermata protocol, which doesn't have a concept of NeoPixels and some of the extra stuff we have on the board. But I'll show you, there's still some neat stuff you can do, and I think this is just a good preview of maybe more that we might do in the future around this kind of area of, you know, using wireless control control through Bluetooth low energy for uh, Circuit Playground and all kinds of other board and uh, boards and things. So let's just kind of dive in and I'll show you. We'll get started real fast. Uh, maybe I'll start with the workbench shot just to show what uh, what I've got here. Let's see. Let's jump to this. Uh, so you can basically see, you know, here's the workbench and I've got Circuit Playground right here. And by the way, uh, I'll put a link in the description below when this goes up on YouTube. So if you don't know what Circuit Playground is, I'll put a link to the product page and also a playlist that has every Circuit Playground related video uh, that we've done. And so we, there's a whole lot, so you can learn a, a lot of cool stuff. You can actually see the entire process of how we design Circuit Playground. Uh, and there's a whole series actually going on now if you tune in on Saturdays, the Maker to Market, uh, in kind of cooperation with DigiKey. You can learn a lot about how we designed the board, how we prototyped, it, all the different decisions that go into making a product. So cool stuff. Anyways, so Circuit Playground, that's the board you're going to need, of course. This little guy right here, this is the Blue Fruit LE module. This is the Flora version of it. So Flora is kind of the wearable platform where Circuit Playground was inspired a lot by Flora. So this is meant to connect to uh, Arduino boards and things. Um, and let's see. Um, Okay, and so that's basically all that we have here. And then we've also got the uh, alligator clips right here. So this is basically the uh, what we're gonna use to connect these. Because the nice thing is with the Blue Fruit module and uh, Circuit Playground, it's really easy to connect wires with alligator clips. They just connect directly to it. So it's uh, you know very, very simple. No soldering required, uh, anyone can do it. So I'll show you what we need to do. So let's jump to the main shot here. And let's see, there we go. So we have all that. Um, and let's just kind of dive in. So this is a link to the product I was talking about, the uh, Blue Fruit LE module, the Flora module. And I'll put a link below when this goes up on YouTube. You can check this out. So this is basically a little Bluetooth low energy radio. And if you aren't familiar with Bluetooth low energy, um, if I remember, I'll put a link in. And actually here, let's just search for it. So Adafruit Bluetooth low energy guide. So we have a couple guides actually in the learning system um, right now that talk a little bit about what Bluetooth low energy is. So I'll put a link to this one below. And it just gives you an overview. You don't have to have like deep knowledge of Bluetooth low energy. So this tells you about like the structure that it has. Just understand that it's a wireless communication protocol and that pretty much every mobile device today supports it. And it's nice in that it's open so that I can just start talking the Bluetooth LE protocol so I can control a device and I can write code to do that without having to like sign a bunch of agreements and pay for all this hardware and stuff, which unfortunately is what you have to do for a lot of modern uh, communication things. Like if you wanna plug a device into an iPhone, 
you've got to have some kind of partnership with Apple or have certain devices and hardware to, to make that work. Luckily though, Bluetooth Low Energy, it's kind of this, I wouldn't say it's an open protocol, but it's maybe open in the sense that you can use it without being encumbered by uh, all of these kind of restrictions and things. So that's what we're gonna use. And that's what this module does. It's a little radio. So actually this little red board is a separate module that gets soldered onto here. Uh, and that basically has all of the Bluetooth Low Energy logic. So it knows how to talk this wireless protocol. And then it exposes itself using a serial connection. So the RX and the TX pins down here, which is perfect because Circuit Playground has a couple uh, serial connections that you can make directly to it. So we can just hook these two boards up directly and they'll talk to each other. Uh, and so it's pretty straightforward and, and easy to, uh, to use. So basically through this little device, then it's gonna send data that it receives from an iPhone application or an Android application, anything that connects to it, it will send that data to Circuit Playground. And then I'll show you Circuit Playground is gonna run a special piece of software that uh, interprets those commands and things coming from the mobile device as controls of like, you know, read this input or set this output, uh, things like that. And then the other thing I'll mention, there's a little guide we have. Now this is the iOS version, but I'll show you, we support both Android and iOS now for this. But this is a nice guide to just look at, to just get a rough idea of what this pin IO mode. So that's what we wanna look at, is the pin IO mode in this uh, tool. And it tells you a little bit about how you can wire this up. So like we have all kinds of these uh, blue fruit modules, you know, things for an Arduino shield. We have standalone little micro boards. Uh, we have feather version, you know, these uh, uh, spy connection ones, which are a little bit faster. But the one, like I mentioned, the Flora BLE, this is the one you want to use. You could potentially, you could use the blue fruit LE UART friend, this one right here. It's very similar to the Flora BLE board. Um, so if you have one of these, feel free to use this. You know, you're just gonna connect uh, the pins a little bit differently. Um, the Spy Friend is gonna be tricky. I don't actually think you can use this with Circuit Playground uh, because you need to get access to the hardware Spy pins, which I think are on the back, I wanna say. We, you might be able to access them if you solder on to uh, some of the programming pins there but that's eh, pretty advanced. Stick with the serial connection. It's gonna be a lot easier uh, for you. But that's what you want. And then this guide talks a little bit about, and oh, unfortunately, this is annoying. Sometimes my mouse, uh, this is one of those magic mice, you know, these Apple things. Uh, and uh, if it gets a piece of cat hair on it, it slows down for some reason, which is a problem when you have a long haired cat. So anyways, uh, so this guide, I'll link to this. The library config page is useful. You're gonna to wanna to check this out. So there's a special library that we have. It's this BLE pin IO library. And if I go to this link right here, it'll show you that it's on GitHub. And you're actually gonna to wanna to download this like as of right now, cause I just added a new example to it. So if you go into the examples, there's a circuit playground example that I added. Uh, and if you search in the library manager in Arduino, you should be able to find this too. So if I go in here to uh, the library manager, and if I say, I think it's just BLE, that should probably make it show up. If I filter down to here, let's see, oh boy, there's a lot of BLE stuff. Um, about BLE pin, if we put that in, do we get it? Uh, all kinds of stuff in here. Let's see, scroll down. Well, I don't see it here. So I'll take a look later and see, this should be in the library manager, but it might be a little tricky to find it. You have to use the right name that's in the uh, library. Pro oh, here's what it's called, uh, BLE Fermata. So if we search for BLE Fermata, this is probably, hopefully this should show up. So, hey, this is uh, live, live stuff. Okay, so filter your search with BLE Fermata. And there we go, so it's in here. Uh, and basically, so install this, make sure you get the 1.1 version. So as of today, you're not gonna get that. It's gonna take a day for the library manager to update. So when you're watching this later, that it'll probably be updated. Uh, if you don't see it, go to the GitHub link and download it, just like it mentions here, uh, and install it in your system. But once you have that installed, you also need a few other things installed. So you're gonna wanna go through the Flora BLE module guide. So go to this page and go to the tutorial here. And just like any product or project or thing that you're working on, you know, test each component individually. So luckily there's no soldering you need to do for this board. So as soon as you get it, you're ready to go. But connect it up to, like you could use Circuit Playground or another Arduino or whatever you have, uh, and just run through some of the examples that they have here. So there's example code, uh, like just talking some basic AT commands to it. Uh, because to do that, you're gonna have to install some of the software on this install software page. So there's another library you need to install. It's Blue Fruit LE NRF51 library. And that should be in the library manager also. So if I look in here, 
we should be able to search for just blue fruit. And yeah, there it is. So make sure you have this library installed also. So those are the only two libraries that we should need uh, to have installed here. So just that Flora uh, module, the, the NRF51, Bluefruit LE NRF51 library actually that I just showed you. And then the PinIO uh, module, which looks like it's called BLE Formata in the library manager. So look for that. Uh, okay, so once you have both those installed, then just open up uh, Arduino. So I'm just running, you know, here's the uh, 1.6.9, I think I'm running right now, version. Go to examples and look for the, uh, let's see, it is Adafruit BLE Fermata. And then you want the circuit playground NRF51822. NRF51822, that's the chip that's on the Flora BLE module, that little red uh, board that you saw there. So it's a really nice little chip from Nordic Semiconductors. Uh, so open that up and I have it open here. And it just talks about how this is a circuit playground specific version of this. So in that library, there are other sketches. Those are just generic ones. You don't want to use those. You can use them, but you're going to have to modify them. And you need to know like which pins are on the boards and things like that. This one's ready to go out of the box. Uh, so you don't need to change anything in this sketch. Uh, it's, it's kind of a big sketch because it implements this Fermata protocol. So it's a little complex. Um, but right here is where it has kind of this setup of what are the pins that are specific to Circuit Playground and stuff like that. So you don't need to modify them, but it's good to know it's there. There's a little bit of config at the top here, though. Uh, if you want to change the serial console output, which I don't recommend changing. So by default, it's going to output debug info on the USB serial port, which is called serial. Uh, and then you can have it wait for something to connect to that USB serial connection before it starts the Fermata protocol. I set this to false by default, so it's not gonna wait. If you set this to true, it just makes it easier to debug because it won't start running until you open the serial monitor so you can capture like early output of the program. But in most cases, you're just gonna burn this to Circuit Playground and be done with it uh, and just start using it. So you don't need to change this. And then verbose mode, you can turn this on and you'll see a lot of output on that USB serial monitor output. Uh, it just taught, it shows you the low level communication between Circuit Playground and the Flora module, which can be useful if you're debugging, but you don't, uh, you don't need to see that kind of output. So, okay, so that's the sketch. Now let's wire up the hardware. So I'll jump back to the workbench shot uh, and maybe I'll just exclusively move to that one for a second here, just to show you uh, so that I'm not in the way with my head. And I'll move the microphone. Hopefully this works here. Uh, okay, so what we need to do then is just connect up this module to Circuit Playground. And it's pretty straightforward. I, I put this as a comment at the top of the sketch. Uh, so if you get confused, you can look there and see. Uh, you're gonna need five uh, wires. Alligator clips are the easiest things for this. So, okay, so let's connect up ground. So on Circuit Playground, there's a couple different ground connections. There's one right here and there's one right here. Any of them work. So I'm just gonna grab this bottom one down here and just clip the, uh, oops, make sure I get the right one. There it is. Clip the uh, alligator clip to that. And then I'm gonna connect that to the ground connection on the board right here, the Flora BLE board. And this doesn't have as large of pads uh, or holes in here as the Circuit Playground. It's kind of a little bit of an older board design, uh, but it's fine, Al alligator clips will hold to this. Uh, okay, let's connect power next. So the board, the Flora BLE module, it has a 3.3 volt power input right here. So that's pretty easy because Circuit Playground has a 3.3 volt power output, which is right here. So be careful, you, there's also a VBAT output. Oops, sorry, you can't see that, the glare. Uh, the VBAT output, you don't wanna use this because this is gonna output, uh, like if it's USB powered, it's gonna give you five volts, which you don't want five volts on a 3.3 volt uh, input on the board there. Uh, or if you have a battery plugged in, it might give you the battery voltage, which is like 3.7 volts. Long story short, use the 3.3 volt output uh, because there's a 3.3 volt regulator there that, that we'll use. Okay, so we connect that up. Uh, now the serial connection. So that's how the board talks to uh, each other, basically. Uh, they, they use a serial connection here. So on the um, Flora BLE module, there's an RX and a TX pin right here. Uh, hopefully I'll get those out of the glare. So RX and TX. Now if you look at Circuit Playground, uh, right here, there's an RX and a TX pin. So RX says number zero, TX says number one. That's because you can use these as digital inputs and outputs, like uh, pin zero and pin one right here. But if you don't use them as digital inputs and outputs, you can use them as serial connections. Now, the tricky thing with serial is that you have to be careful about how you wire these things up because 
the RX, that's the receive pin, that needs to be connected to the TX of the other board, not the RX. So if you just go through and say, oh, RX to RX, that's not gonna work because you've connected two receive pins to each other. Uh, you know, the, 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 the issue would be like, Circuit Playground is listening on that RX pin and uh, the Blue Fruit LE module here, it's also listening on that RX pin. So they're never gonna send data across those pins. So you need to swap the pins. You know, basically the RX and TX is uh, local to that board. So think of it as like, you know, this is the RX for the Blue, uh, Blue Fruit module. This is the RX for the uh, Circuit Playground module. So I need to swap them. So I'm gonna connect the RX on the Flora Blue Fruit module to the TX on the Circuit Playground board right here. And then same thing for the TX pin on the Flora module, Blue Fruit module. I'm gonna connect that to the RX pin on the Circuit Playground board. So super easy to, to get this wrong. Uh, it's not gonna hurt anything, it's just the sketch won't work. It's gonna say it can't talk to the Blue Fruit module. Uh, okay, and then there's one last thing. There's this mode pin right here. And that's used to tell this board uh, if, it's, if it should receive commands or if it should receive data, uh, which is useful. We actually need this hooked up to make this work. So I'm gonna hook up a connection to the mode pin. And then this can go to any digital output on the uh, Circuit Playground board. I'm gonna use number 12. That's what the sketch is set up to use by default. But I'll show you, you can change that if you need to. And then one last super critical thing, there's a slide switch on the Flora BLE module right here. So it can slide down into command mode or up into data mode. Uh, just keep it up in data mode. That's where you wanna have it. Now this mode pin is what we're gonna use to control stuff. But by default, I think we just wanna keep it into uh, the data mode. So make sure that's slid into data mode. Uh, and it won't hurt anything. It's just things won't work if you, uh, if you don't have it connected correctly. Okay, so let's jump back to the main view here. And let's see then. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, uh, I will upload this sketch. Well, first I'll connect Circuit Playground to my computer. So there that is, and let me move the microphone over. Um, okay, so we're connected, and now let's program this sketch. And like I said, you don't need to modify anything. Um, if you didn't connect that mode pin to uh, number input number 12 on Circuit Playground, you will need to modify one thing. So if you go into this bluefruitconfig.h header file right here, there's this UART mode pin. So you can see it's set to 12. You could set this to a different value. Um, I did notice I tried using it without the mode pin and the negative one value and I couldn't get it to work. So I think because of the, the rate of data and the amount of data that Formata sends, you, you really need to have this mode pin hooked up. Uh, for this to work. So, you know, the, the long story short, use pin 12 like I'm showing you here. But if you don't, uh, then, you know, you can change it to use something else. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to hit compile to make sure that this still compiles, which hopefully it should because I just uploaded it to GitHub. And uh, we'll give it a second. Okay, so that compiles. And then let's uh, make sure we have our board selected. So Circuit Playground, that's selected. And then uh, the port for this is the one that it found, so that looks good. So let's just hit upload and push this out to the board. So it's gonna program it. You can see here's the output of the programming down here. So, okay, so just uploaded it. Now, nothing really happens by default, uh, and we should actually see. So if you look at the Flora module here, it's blinking, there's a red light there. Uh, and if you look at the guide uh, on this uh, piece of hardware, you know, it talks about like uh, what these lights and things mean. So when this red light is flashing like that, it's waiting for a device to connect to it. And then when a device does connect, there's a blue light right next to it that you'll see that comes on. Uh, so at this point now, we can actually use a mobile app to connect to this. So the apps that you can use, if I go back to the guide on this, um, it mentioned, so there's an iOS app and there's an Android app. And so the iOS app is the Blue Fruit LE uh, Connect application, I, I believe. Let's, let's double check that, Blue Fruit Connect LE. Uh, let's see if that's what it's, I'm trying to see if the App Store uh, links. I guess, I guess it makes sense. Google doesn't really index the Apple App Store. <laughs> so, well, here's the Android version. This is the app that you want for Android, the Adafruit Bluefruit LE Connect. Look for the same thing on the iOS App Store, and I'll show you on an iPad uh, what it looks like. So you want to install this 
on your mobile device. Um, and your mobile device does need to support Bluetooth Low Energy. For iOS, I'm pretty sure every Apple device, you know, in the last uh, at least two or three years should support it. Uh, Android, if you've bought an Android device in the last two or three years, you probably have support for Bluetooth Low Energy, but we, you really can't guarantee. There's a lot more Android devices. So, you know, just, and, and also to note, just because your phone supports Bluetooth doesn't necessarily mean it supports Bluetooth low energy. That's a completely separate protocol. So Bluetooth Classic is used for like streaming audio and uh, lots of different things. Whereas Bluetooth low energy, it's this whole new separate thing. And like I mentioned, uh, skim this little guide, this intro to Bluetooth low energy, if you're curious about the details. But okay, let's jump back to the workbench shot and I'll see if I can fit the uh, iPad onto the workbench and uh, and we can just go through you know this application so we'll do that and I will zoom it out a little bit let's go wider so you can see the a bit of the messy workbench here I'll move the microphone over a little bit so hopefully I'm in uh, the frame here okay so let's scooch these over here and I've got an uh, iPad right here so I'm gonna open up the iPad let me turn this thing on and okay so here's you know iOS and okay good it looks like it's visible and here's the app. So it's, it's called Blue Fruit, and it's the Blue Fruit LE Connect app. So I'm gonna run it, uh, and then it wants to look at a list of peripherals. And this is cool, so I open up the peripheral list, and look at this, BLE Fermata is a device that it found. Uh, and so that's actually the little board right here. So it's advertising itself with the name BLE Fermata. And if I click Connect on it, then uh, and then I click this to basically show you know the main page. So it connected, so notice the blue light just lit up. So that means that there is a wireless connection between the iPad here and the Bluefruit module. Now the way Bluetooth Low Energy works, at least right now for our devices, you can only have one device connected at a time. So I can't pull out my phone and connect and start controlling it. Only this iPad can talk to it right now. Uh, and when it loads up by default, it tells you a little bit about um, the module. So it says like, here's the firmware and stuff that's loaded on it. The thing we want to look at down below, there's a menu of options here, and I want to click the pin IO mode button. So when I click that, it actually just talks to the circuit playground board to figure out, okay, what digital pins do you have? You know, do you have like pin one or pin two? Uh, and it, it, the circuit playground board sends, you know, a message back. So it's, you know, circuit playground sends a message to the blue fruit module, which then sends a message to the application wirelessly here that says, Hey, you know, these are all the pins that I have, and this is what you can do. So this is cool. This gives you a list of all the pins, which most of those pins are the, the outputs on the side of the board, but some of them are pins that control the components on the board. Like for example, pin number four or pin number 19, these are the pins that are connected to the push buttons on circuit playground. And if you look, pin 19 right here, it says it's set as an input and it's at a low level right now. And that's because the way these push buttons work on Circuit Playground, when they're not pressed, they, they stay at a low level. And when they're pressed, they go up to a high level. Now, I don't know if you can see this on the video, but watch right here where it's showing pin 19 at a low level. I'm gonna press that push button and look at that. It just switched to high as I'm holding it down. I'm gonna let go and it just switches back to low. So that's pretty cool. Like, you know, I can just wirelessly see and like the other button number four is up here. So if you look where my finger is right next to that, that changes to high and then goes back down to low when I let go. So that's kind of cool. Like you can just see the states of those buttons already. And the slide switch, this is pin number 21. Now this one's not like a momentary switch. This will just stay at a level. So right now it's at a low level. And if I slide it over to the left, now it's at a high level right here and then back to the right and it's at a low level. So pretty cool that you can see that kind of stuff, um, you know, just by loading up this firmware and connecting. And this is wireless, you know, there's nothing connected between these boards right here. Uh, and there's a little bit of range. I could probably be anywhere in the room and control this, but Bluetooth Low Energy isn't meant for long distances. You know, it's meant for you holding your phone next to a device basically. So there are limits to uh, that. Uh, now you can also use digital outputs. So like, Pin number 13, which is not exposed as one of the outside outputs, that's actually connected to the little red LED on Circuit Playground. And by default, everything is set as an input because it's kind of like a safe default state uh, for most hardware. But I'm just gonna set this to an output mode. Uh, and at this point now, I can actually, you can actually see it turned off. Uh, I can control, so it's at a low level. If I click this, it's at a high level. So notice that the red LED just came on. You know, low, high, so on, off. 
Pretty cool, just pressing a button. So you know what's happening here is this application is sending over that Bluetooth low energy wireless connection a message to the Flora board here. And Flora is taking that message and sending it to Circuit Playground through this little wired serial connection right here. And that message says, hey, turn on pin 13, you know, to a high level. And then the, the firmware on Circuit Playground goes and does that. So really cool and powerful stuff. And I can connect other things up to this. So for example, uh, I have a little LED right here. So this is just a little uh, five millimeter green LED, a little 560 ohm resistor. So the way I have it connected up, uh, you want the longer lead of the LED. That's where your kind of input voltage goes into. Uh, you want that connected to one of the digital outputs on Circuit Playground. And then the shorter leg of the LED, that needs to connect to a resistor. Uh, 560 ohms is what I'm using. You could use like, you know, uh, one kilo ohm or like 300 ohms, anywhere from like 300 to a kilo ohm or so. Uh, but you do need a resistor because you want to limit the amount of current that goes through here. Uh, and then from that resistor, connect it down to ground. So what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll start with the ground connection. So I'll connect, um, you know, the ground connection, which goes through that resistor to the shorter leg of the LED. I'll connect that to one of the ground pins on Circuit Playground. So I'm just gonna make this alligator connection right there, alligator clip. And then the other thing, so the, uh, the positive lead, the longer lead of the LED, I'm gonna connect this to a digital output, uh, like number 10 on the Circuit Playground board right here. So I connect that up. And you can see the LED kind of came on and that's because it's set as an input. So it's kind of floating at a, lo a logic level right now. Now I'm gonna go back to the app here and, uh, and it's kind of nice, it stayed connected. You can notice that. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna use, so if I go to pin 10, I can set it as an output and you can see it's low and I can click this and it turns on to a high level, you know, on, off, on, off. So that's cool. Like you can connect up like relays or, you know, any kind of digital uh, device to this that just needs an on, off signal and just control it with an app, you know, and this is only, uh, you know, maybe 15 minutes or so to load everything up. So it's that that's pretty impressive. The cool thing though you can do, there's a PWM mode. This is pulse width modulation. This is how you can dim an LED. So the way this works is it kind of, it sends a really fast on and off signal. And if it's off more times than it's on, then the LED appears to be off. And then if it's on more often than it's off, you'll see that the light gets progressively brighter. So what the way this works, you drag this little slider. And so you can see, I just drag a little bit to the right and it kind of lit up. And then if I keep going, it gets brighter and brighter. So it's, it's, it's a little hard to tell because the automatic exposure on this camera, but it's kind of cool. You know, I can just drag this thing around and, and go light, dark, uh, you know, all the way down to off. So again, really neat that you just kind of get this for free in some ways. Like you didn't have to write any code or anything. It's just playing with this device um, and, and using the Fermata firmware here. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, you know, that's just a couple examples of, of what you can do with this. Uh, you can also connect things up and read, you know, any of the digital inputs. So like I was showing, you know, the, uh, the, the buttons that are on Circuit Playground, but I could hook something up to pin 10, you know, set it as an input. And then, uh, you know, maybe that's like a switch or maybe it's like a PIR, uh, infrared kind of motion sensor. You could hook one of those things up. So lots of cool options there for it. Now, one thing I'm, I'm not going to get into because I think there's still a bug. Um, so Circuit Playground has more, you know, there's a light sensor, temperature sensor, there's a microphone, there's a little buzzer. Uh, and actually the, the PWM buzzer, it's on pin number five. Uh, you can actually set this. If I put it in PWM mode and if I drag this over, you can see it's making a tone. But it doesn't really change the frequency of the tone. And that's just because the way that this PWM works isn't really the way that you control that audio. So, you know, I'm just going to turn that off. But there, there is some stuff you can do, but unfortunately the analog components, the uh, light sensor, temp sensor, and the microphone, uh, for some reason I can't read them with the, the pin IO right now. So I, I think it's a little weird thing with the firmware. Uh, you have to basically tell it exactly all the pins that are configured. And so hopefully we'll be able to fix that uh, later. Uh, and again, like I said, you know, the NeoPixels on the board, you can't control that right now. So you might notice there is a NeoPixel mode in this app but you need a special sketch. And I was actually just thinking maybe next week or maybe the week after uh, I might do an example of how to uh, control the NeoPixels the same way over Bluetooth Low Energy. But right now this won't work. So it's only the pin IO mode uh, that we can use. So, oops, okay, I'll say okay to that. Uh, so, okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and then the one thing I'll show, so, you know, hey, not everyone uses Apple devices. So this is uh, uh, 
all kinds of different options here. So I've got an Android phone uh, that I'll use. This is the Moto G. And let me open this up. And if I go to my apps here, oops. So, okay. So here's the uh, apps. And you can see here's Blue Fruit LE. So I'm gonna click this app. And oh, the interesting thing, so notice the blue light is still on. So my iPad is still connected. So I'm actually not, like it, it can't find the device. You see, it's searching for devices. There's nothing there because once it's connected, it's not advertising itself to say, hey, I'm a device. So what I need to do is I need to actually close the app on my iPad here. So let me just open, oops, go back here. And I close the app and then notice the blue light just went off. And look, it just popped up on this device here. So that's cool. You know, it's, it's nice to see all this stuff actually uh, working kind of like, uh, and then like that. Okay, so I'll connect to the device and it asks here how I want to connect. Do the pin IO mode, that's the one. And you might not be able to tell. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to read this phone uh, from down here, but it's doing the same thing. It's querying the pins and I have the exact same view here. So, you know, like pin number 10, I'll set it as a PWM. And then, you know, I can drag it around and turn it on and off and, and light it up uh, like that. Or, you know, if I want pin 13, I can set that as an output and set it high. Uh, and then you see the light comes on or set it low. So exactly the way you expect. And you probably can't see it, but you know, if I press the buttons here, pin 19 just changed to high and then it just changed to low when I let go. So works with Android, works with iOS. Um, there's also a Mac OS 10 desktop version uh, that you can find in the Mac App Store, uh, but I haven't had time. I think this is kind of running a, a little bit long. But anyways, so let's jump back to the main view here. And oh, my mouse got more cat hair on it, unfortunately. So, okay, let's go back to this view. There we go. Oh boy, well, this is, this is a wacky view. Uh, how about we go back to desktop view? There we go. Uh, so, okay, so I, I think I'll wrap it up then. That was it for this stream. Uh, like I said, I wanted to show off just a neat idea I had earlier in the week uh, to connect a Blue Fruit LE module to Circuit Playground so I could wirelessly control Circuit Playground with Fermata. And I, I hope that I showed in this stream that it's actually pretty easy. Like just wire up a few things with alligator clips and you're good to go. Uh, and hopefully in the future, we might expand on this more so that you can do more with uh, the Circuit Playground board and the apps that we have, you know, like control the NeoPixels, read those analog sensors, uh, lots of cool stuff you can do with this. And I think it's a pretty powerful idea too, because you could make this a wearable. So, you know, Circuit Playground, this is great. Uh, I have one, I don't have it near me, but I put a little name tag magnet on the back of it so I can stick it to my shirt. Uh, and you could do the exact same thing with the Blue Fruit LE module. And you could just, you know, you could use alligator clips and wires, or, you know, you could probably use uh, conductive thread maybe, uh, although I'm not as familiar with that stuff. So, you know, check out the old videos from Becky on some of that to, to get some tips. But, you know, this is a really powerful thing, I think, that you've got a way to wirelessly talk to the Circuit Playground board. And, you know, from mobile devices like phones, you know, that we use today, that's really cool for it. So, okay, if there are questions, throw them into the chat and I'll see if I can get to them real quick. So we'll jump back to the main view. And hopefully this isn't stuttering too badly. Uh, I'm still troubleshooting some weird issue with Wirecast where only in this view it starts stuttering even though my CPU usage is not that high. So sorry about that, bear with it. Uh, the audio hopefully is still good. So uh, we'll deal with that. Uh, let's see. So someone was asking, can you read the values of the sensors on Circuit Playground? Yeah, like I said, unfortunately there's, uh, you should be able to because most of them are analog sensors uh, that give you, you know, a voltage you can read with the analog to digital converter. But there's something weird with the Fermata firmware where it's not exposing all the analog pins right now. So long or short answer is no, you can't right now. Long answer is hopefully once I debug this a little more, you'll be able to read those analog sensors. Now the tricky thing is like, you're just gonna get the raw analog value. So for like the thermistor, you know, you're gonna get a value that's like, oh, I just noticed there's something like on my shirt here. Sorry about that if that was uh, annoying people. Uh, I just know, or, well, so you're gonna get the raw thermistor value. So that's gonna be like a voltage of like, you know, uh, well, it's not even a voltage. It's just a value from zero to 1023 that's proportional to the voltage, which is proportional to the resistance, uh, which is proportional to the temperature. So you're not gonna get like 22.2 degrees Celsius. You're gonna get like 891 or 752. And so you're gonna have to run the equations yourself to kind of figure out how to convert that. There's this uh, the steinhardt hart equations that convert thermistors into you know a, a voltage value into like a temperature or a resistance value, I think rather into a temperature. Uh, and then the light sensor, that one's a little easier because it doesn't give you like a 
proper light value like Lux or anything like that. It just changes its resistance based on how bright or how uh, dim it is in the room. So that one could work. The microphone is tricky because you know, um, you can read it as an analog input, and that just means you're going to get like these point in time audio samples. But that's not how you really interpret audio. I've talked about this before where, you know, audio, like what we hear is really the frequency of the audio, not like, you know, the specific value of, you know, a digital sample for it. So you usually need to do more processing on audio. Like if you want to understand the volume of the audio that's being picked up, you need to like average out some samples and see like what is the magnitude of the, the sine wave signal that it's receiving. Uh, and if you want to get really advanced, you can look at the frequencies by running a fast Fourier transform, but that's pretty complex. Uh, not too complex though, like there is code. We have code that does that on Arduino. Uh, so maybe future videos, I might play more with that. But again, so just be aware, like you can't really read the sensors right now. Um, eventually, hopefully you, hopefully you will be able to, but don't get your hopes up too much just because you're just gonna get those raw analog values for the sensors, so. Okay, well, that was it. I think that was the only question. So I'll wrap up the stream. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, this is Tony from Adafruit. So check out youtube.com slash Adafruit. You can find this video and all kinds of other videos and projects there. Twitch.tv slash Adafruit. That's where I like to live stream these things. Uh, and you can also see all kinds of other live streams that we do there. Also Facebook Live and lots of other platforms uh, that we use. So check those out. Uh, and then if you like this, if this is useful info, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know that this is useful stuff and, and we'll keep doing it for folks. So until then, this is Tony from Adafruit, and I'll see you guys later.